Hello. Hey, what's up? Hi, how's it going? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. I am. I'm quite into this coffee that I had. It's not as bad as like the 20 lines of Coke I did on New Year's, mm -hmm. but it's it's still pretty high energy. So. Gotcha. OK, so you're saying you're amped up for this discussion. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Good, good. All right. Introduce yourself. And give them your pronouns because they care a lot about that. And they bully me. <laughs> Aw, they know. care a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Denims. I go by she, her. I'm a cis woman. So those pronouns are cool for me. Uh, I'm a Twitch streamer. I talk about politics. I stream in the morning, the AM, so that people can have something to occupy them while they're wage slave working. Mm -hmm. And um, I currently call myself a sock dem. And my chat has been subjugating me to harassment every single day waiting for me to get bread pilled uh where where are you getting your the socialist audience from like where like how, how where are they harassing you from what's the association you know oh like wh whose people are doing this to me yeah yeah like what what has motivated your audience to compel you to move in that direction well like a lot of the people that i'm currently friends with have like very socialist um audiences uh, so like a couple streamers, for example, on Twitch that like raid into me and I raid into them. So uh, like Mike, Mike from PA, mm -hmm. Lucid Fox. Um, is Lucid guess, Fox like, a I socialist? Think, I don't know much about Lucid Fox. Yeah, he has like a, um, what is it? It's, I think he has a libertarian socialist flag in his background, oh, if I'm not shit. mistaken. That's my favorite it's like, flag. It's it's the one that's like the half black, half red, right? Uh, Unless I'm... The, the I'm one with the, um, the straight, like the diagonal line. Yeah, that's ANCOM, but it's it's essentially oh. it's it's essentially a libertarian socialist. Okay, flag. okay, good, yeah. good, okay. Basically, because I know that he basically calls himself one, so I just want to double check. And then um, I get some people who say that they're from like Hassan stream, and like Hassan calls himself a socialist or something. He's very anti-capitalist. Mm -hmm. And then I have some people who you know suck your cock off, and they come into my chat, and then they tell me they want you to bread pill me. Ah. I didn't know I had any audience reach in, uh, in Twitch, considering my exile from the community. <laughs> Pepe la vie, dude. Yeah, they're never letting me back in. I'm, I'm out here forever now. I'm in the wastes. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to contact the Twitch managers. Mm -hmm. I just need to find a male, a straight male. And then um, sort of like just talk to them a little bit. Just give them, you know, the, the, the you know, just like a, some friendly, some friendly conversation. And then, and then somewhere in there, I'll be like, hey, you know, so I got this buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. Yo, like, we can continue these arrangements, uh, but I need you to I need you to give them a quick little pass, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's, that's the secret, right? You, you fly down to San Francisco, get a hotel for a week, and start swiping on Tinder until you see somebody whose job profile exactly. says, like, a partner manager or, like, a, a administrative moderator at twitch.tv, and you <laughs> slide into those DMs. Exactly! So, like, originally, the plan was to go for the Hassan Bokari guy, but he got... You know, yeah, you got, yeah, me too. Whoop. He got fucking exploded. So Same, like, that guy I was can't like go a, for that. That guy was a vulnerability too. Like that guy was a, apparently that guy was a pretty susceptible to yeah, that he type was, of influence. He was very susceptible. And guys, like, not let that me Hassan, tell you, dude. not that Hassan guys. Other no, 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 Hassan. Not, 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 not that, not, not Hassan, not, not Hassan Piker. Um, there was a different one. There was a, there was a different one, but yeah. And I mean, like. I thought maybe I could connect on some like brown to brown basis, you know, um, and then and then we could hit it off. But it turns out that's that's not on the cards for me, so it's okay. Well, I, you know, I appreciate the effort. Maybe one of these days I'll put some of my um, my streamer dough towards enlisting an army of uh, e girls to travel down to uh, the Bay Area and uh, enact my will in that fashion. You know, it's not yeah, a bad idea. Yeah, I think idea. it'll work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw some she hers in your chat. There's some there's some some e girls in there potentially. <laughs> you know, I I actually have a fairly um, diverse audience. The the YouTube debate bro scene usually has an overwhelmingly male appeal. I think I'm like eighty twenty, which I think is relatively good for that scene. I know that there are way worse off ratios. Like like eighty men to every twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm actually surprised by. Well, I mean, I guess I'm not that surprised, but I'm vaguely surprised whenever like women come into my chat and they're like, "Hey, like, you know, thanks for creating a space for women to talk in and whatever." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. That's sick." Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's kind of the industry is a little bit anemic when it comes to gender representation, you know, like streaming in yeah. general, or I guess politics yeah. streaming. Wait, give me one second. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha.
Is this the Soak Dem or the MAGA person? This is the MAGA person. This is the Trump supporter. We'll yeah, I'm here. actually really pro-Trump. Um, I'm So I'm actually branching off into sort of like a Candace Owens type stream, except like instead of talking about the black on black crime, I'm going to be talking about the um, foreign terrorists that we have yet to deal with. You know, I'm going to mainly be talking about ISIS and how it's a really big problem. Oh, yeah. Real big problem. MS-13. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Really, really heavy one for America right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's me. All right. Iceless. You ready to get to it? Uh, um, yeah, I have a Google Doc and everything. Oh, sh OK. Well, then you have me at an intellectual disadvantage because I am playing Fall Guys uh, to adhere to the tradition of the video game stream. So uh, feel use your, you know, your superior note taking abilities. Well, OK, they will be your greatest strength here. All right. All right. All right. All right. I got you. I got you, fam. All right. You open open up with the premise. You probably oh, know where I'm course. at. I don't necessarily know where you're at. Yeah, I mean, like, I think I've watched maybe like, I don't know, like an hour of your content. Um, it's so hard as like a content creator to like watch other people's content. It's just like it's hard to find the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I did get to see your conversation with Hakeem, and I've seen like, I don't know, like one or two other things, like one or two other clips that people have sent me. I guess I want to bring up two main points and then there's a couple other points that i also want to talk about mm -hmm. um one of the first ones is the difference between using the label of sock dem versus using the label of socialism which i know is a topic that has been brought up probably recently because of the zan stuff as well but um i think it's pertinent due to something that you said that you do um, with your specific titles Right. And then the second thing I wanted to do was talk about, and I'm obviously very willing to be convinced on most of this stuff because the reality is calling yourself a socialist is way easier than calling yourself a sock dem and then having half the people call you a commie and half the people call you a lib cuck. So I would be very happy to convert. Um, and then the second thing is I wanted to talk about how, I, I guess I'm a bit confused or maybe I haven't read enough or met, read enough theory, mm -hmm. but I feel like if you aren't doing things in an authoritarian manner, which I'm very against, and I'm, from my understanding, you are too, um, it's very, how do you prevent capitalism for overtaking socialism again in the future? Um, like if you don't have these authoritarian measures, how do you prevent um, regulations and business protocols to not just be re reverted into capitalist norms? Yeah, okay. Um, which of these do you want to hit at from the beginning? I assume you have those listed on your document. Yeah. Uh, would you prefer me to send it to you, or does it not matter? It does not matter to me. Just whichever point you want to hit to first. Uh, yeah, I want to hit the latter first. Gotcha. Okay, so with regards to authoritarianism and the ability to prevent society from denigrating back into, uh, or degenerating back into capitalism? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so... As far as I'm concerned, socialism is essentially just economic democracy. Like, that's the simplest way of putting it, and I think that's probably, in addition to being the most succinct, probably the most accurate way of describing it. So when we talk about what socialism is, or like fundamentally how something would revert back to being capitalism, what we're really talking about is the ability for a select group of people to consolidate power. Um, yes. We moved from feudalism to democracy. Uh, we, we eliminated, like socially, the ability for the aristocracy to return in a number of ways. Obviously, like back in 1200, it could very well be the case that a wealthy and well-connected person with a private army could attack and hold a castle and then say, this is my shit now. This is my shit. And I pledge my fealty to the king as long as this stays my shit. And that was like a legitimate and oft-used way of seizing power. Nowadays, we can't and we don't do that. It would be impossible to do that, um, not only because there isn't really a cultural avenue towards doing that, but also because you would break a few laws on the way and probably yeah. end up getting murked by the SWAT teams. Um, and I think the same thing essentially would happen with the bourgeois. Right now, we have an autocratic economic system where traditionally owned firms are completely and totally controlled by the people who own them. And there's not a semblance of democracy to be found there. They appoint managers beneath them, who appoint managers beneath them, who hire people. But there's no real decision-making process that isn't fundamentally controlled. Agree. Yeah. So if you get rid of that system and you you have like a, a, a standard of economic democracy, by what mechanism could one introduce economic autocracy again? It seems like there'd be no mechanism for it. Like, why would any group of workers in a society which has normalized collective labor ownership ever cede to a system like that. It seems counterintuitive. I guess 
in times of great economic or social peril, much in the same way that people tend to turn to autocrats when they feel their way of livelihood is threatened, it's possible people who felt it necessary could turn to economic autocracy. But I don't think it's something that would happen in a well-functioning, stable society. So that's what I would defer to, that the rule of law and social norms would make it essentially impossible for capitalism to return. Okay, um, what about, so I guess... Sorry, I that was very long-winded, I apologize. No, 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 no you're fine. No. <laughs> You're getting into the fall, guys, bro. I understand. You need your chat not to harass you about being bad at video games. I, so I guess the bigger question here is, like, there are things that, like, the example that you brought, I feel like it illustrates the point in an extreme way, specifically for illustrating the point, which is, okay, you want this fucking castle. It's 1200 Fucking you go take it. Whatever is yours, you want it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in the reality, like, the way most policies um, are enacted today and the way that most regulations are um, appealed today is much more, I guess, let's say insidious or like out of the public eye. Like we, I mean, I, I think that this is a pretty good example. I'm not like super into European politics, so it's a little bit difficult or the very, or actually like the UK, but like from my understanding, they have a healthcare system and there is a party that just wants to still gut it anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. So despite them having made advancements, um, I would say that like, having healthcare is like the very bare minimum of like getting to maybe socialism um, or like on a framework on a like pathway there. But how do you get to the point, like if you get to that point where like another party gets in power that wants to take away these smaller things, but you have people who um, support this, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, what exactly makes socialism uh, free from this? Well, that's my critique of social democracy. Even if you implement a welfare state, you aren't changing the fact that your politicians are still beholden to the interests of capital. The reason why the Tories are so intent on gutting the NHS, which they've already done to a decent extent, is because there's profit to be made in it. You can make money from, you know, uh, organizing deals with private corporations that, you know, end up privatizing it bit by bit by bit, um, or selling off portions of care to other countries. Or, um, there was something about that, wasn't there, that they were considering like there was an American company that was considering selling services to the NHS or something like that. There's money to be made in these processes. And the only reason the politicians are at all interested in being complicit in sort of the gutting of these systems is because we have a system where people with money have power at all. Um, it's only because of the existence of the bourgeois that this is even a question in politics. If you had universal health care that everybody used from the, from the most prominent and well-loved politician all the way down to the most meager citizen, it was universally beloved and supported through um, universal taxation, Th there, would, there wouldn't really be an impetus to get rid of it. There wouldn't really be a mechanism. There'd be no monetary or financial incentive. It would just be a matter of policy. How much money are you willing to give to it and what have you? But I don't think anyone would be maliciously tearing it apart, you know? What would remove the financial incentive in socialism? To, um, to privatize the NHS? Yeah. The inability to privatize, of course. So there still would be some level of policy or like some level of like, I, I don't know if this would be counted as authoritarian, but like you would have certain policies in place that would say you can't touch these things. I would think healthcare is one of those industries which is so flawed in a market system that I think there should be, not even through publicly owned corporations, not even through worker co-ops, I don't think healthcare should be run by anything other than the state. I think the decommodification okay. is the only way forward with that. So my question here is, do you think we can't have decommodification under just social democratic policies? Oh, sure we can. But the politicians still answer generally to the wealth. And as long as there's wealth to be made, decommodification is temporary, as we've seen with the NHS. Some countries hold out longer than others. I mean, obviously, Sweden's doing better with its systems, I think. Again, I'm not that versed on European policy. Um, then england is but there's always that pressure that's one of the reasons why i like socialism social democracy is a constant war with the bourgeois and they're wealthier than you and they're stronger than you and they control the media in the socialism there is no bourgeois to war with the war is already won and now it's just a matter of the proletariat deciding what they want for themselves and i quite like that i think it it's it's better to eliminate your opposition than to maintain a perpetual stalemate where they'll always have the advantage now you don't think that like hmm so uh, you don't think that there will be people inevitably who are still capitalists in a socialist society? What is a capitalist person? Um, someone who wants to garner capital and is capable of doing so. 
wants to garner capital and is capable of doing so. Um, I don't know what it would mean for them to be capable of doing so. If there's no mechanism by which they could privately own capital, then there wouldn't really be a mechanism by which they could enforce their will. I'm sure there will be many people who want that, but even today there are plenty of petty tyrants who spend their day, like, jerking off in their bedroom, right? Like, there are plenty of people who wish they could be a king. There's just no road for them to get there, so thankfully they're harmless. So the policies that would make it such that you can't privatize certain industries or certain workforces, wouldn't those be able to be repealed as well under socialism? Sure, but under what incentive? Because nobody would really stand to benefit from it. The people who actually write, the, say we still have like a, a representative democracy, say it's not a direct democracy, we have like a parliamentary, you vote in your system. Um, what would be the pressure? What special interest group would want to make that change? This is the whole, it's the idea of like, um, of class interest that generally speaking, groups will operate in their best interest unless they've been misled in some way, as the media does, I think, with many poor people in the United States, without there being some powerful underlying group that's interested in that. I don't know if there would be that impetus. And it could well be the case that people could be misled through media, but who in the media would benefit from misleading them so? There are no friends to the wealthy because there are no wealthy people. There's no mechanism for these people to attain the power they want. There would be struggles, and I'm sure there would be conservative people even in socialist governments, but I don't I don't think it would play out as poorly as it does in the system that we have today. The deck is just too stacked in their favor right now, you know? Well, yeah, sure, I would agree. But I would also point to, like, online personalities today that have garnered, like, millions of, like, viewers and millions of, like, followers who will, like, believe what these people say to the ends of the earth, despite all of it being completely false. They totally have a prerogative for doing that. They can just sell their shitty pills that don't do anything, right? There's definitely still some desire so, like, to do in, that. So, like, independent media selling disinfo, essentially? Yeah, I would say that it's actually incredibly effective currently right now with sure. the amount of people who unironically believe that the election was stolen. Also, very briefly, really quickly, unrelated to anything else, I'm not actually a MAGA simp. I know some people thought that I was. I'm trolling. I'm not a MAGA simp, okay? I'm I literally sure voted Bernie and I voted Biden. Specifically, uh, what is it called? Never mind. But yeah, thank you. Well, sure, but the same could be said of monarchy, no? I mean, back in the day, back when there was real competition between democratic and monarchical systems, there were philosophers and merchants and the landed aristocracy who would make every possible effort to convince the general population that, no, the peasantry shouldn't be deciding things for themselves, that democracy is not the way to go, and they had quite a bit of money behind them as well. Now, eventually they lost, but after they lost, when there was no longer a meaningful chance at monarchy re-emerging in some countries, the apparatuses for them to advocate for their interests disappeared as well. Most of the so-called independent media that advocates for, like, ruthless deregulation and capitalism, mm -hmm. like Prager University, these companies are usually financed by the bourgeois or, like, directly managed by them. The incentive structure is still there. I just don't know if in a socialist country, a truly democratized country, where everybody now benefits from collective ownership, that there would be this, this like, audience for, for that. Like, who could be sold on this idea? I guess today there are people sold in the idea of monarchy, but I certainly don't think it'd be a majority of people. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I can, I, I can see, by the way, that this could be an issue. I'm not a fan of autocracy. It could well be the case that even after a socialist government comes about, there are people who want to fuck with it in some way. And I would hope there could be cultural and social solutions to that. I do think there are some things that should be legislated in. I think that economic democracy is something which should be mandated to an extent, but I don't think the government should be policing people's thoughts, you know, so. Yeah, of course. Right. I mean, from my understanding, you are anti-authoritarian, correct? I would hope so. People tell me otherwise, but I do believe that about myself. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I'm pretty sold um, because for me, this is like one of the biggest problems, right? Because... If you don't want to live in a hellscape where you have literal gulags, literal re-education camps, um, you will have this problem. But I think that like, obviously, and we're going to assume that the masses are educated enough, that they understand the differences between these things, and that we have progressed far enough in our education system and our healthcare system and all these other facets that we move past individualism and into collectivism such that in the same way that we've no one has really, maybe, maybe, has desire to go back to monarch times, although questionable considering some of uh, Caitlin Bennett's reactionary tyrant <laughs> tweets. Right, right. Um, 
and and some other people who unironically are wearing like shirts that say like Trump to 2024, Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump. And it's like, okay, so you, you just want you just want a monarchy again. You just want like, okay, got it. <laughs> right. There are people like that and they're free to believe what they want to believe. Now, of course, if I, there was a socialist government and a great many people rose up to reintroduce autocracy, I would hope they would be treated the same way that any people attempting to establish a dictatorship in the United States of America should be treated, of course. I think the democratic system should work to preserve themselves. But I think there are cultural solutions to these things. I think that legislation is generally extremely ineffective at dealing with authoritarianism. It's not, it doesn't change people's minds. It just sort of ferments um, resentment. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I, I wanted to be aware that like, this is something that hasn't just been like glossed over because uh, it's something like that's eaten my brain eating out my brain for like a while, ever since I've started talking to socialists. Um, but yeah, okay, so the second thing I was gonna talk about was um, a couple of points that I heard you personally make, and um, I, I guess I wanted to understand your leaning on this. So if I'm not mistaken, you say in like the Hakeem conversation that um, you call yourself a libertarian socialist rather than I believe an, an anarchist is, is the same that you used mm -hmm. um, for I think two primary reasons. Um, the first one was that there's a lot of contention on what anarchism actually means. Um, and the second one was that it is better to use the libertarian socialist label because the word libertarian confuses people on the right and it confuses people who are like moderates and it makes them more, I don't know, susceptible to your influence. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, I would say the same thing about calling yourself a sock den. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm totally fine with that. If there are, So whether or not you're actually a social Democrat, um, though, I, I, well, I do want to point out one thing. The term libertarian socialist is an accurate description of my beliefs. If a person is a socialist but calls themselves a soak dem, there is some trickery going on there. But when it comes to optics and when it comes to, I don't know, the ability to convince other people, yeah, 100 um, percent. Social democracy is not only more palatable to a lot of people, it's also much more empirically defensible offhand. Uh, sure. Usually when you talk about socialism, you have to get into like theory business and depending on who you're talking to, that isn't always viable. Um, at the end of the day, of course, I'm only okay with the advocacy for social democracy as a stepping stone. As soon as social democrats get uppity and they start um, attacking socialists and saying, oh no, well, as long as oh, we okay. have a strong welfare state, then we start to have an issue. But, okay, cool. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. But as long as they're not doing that, I'm okay with their engagement. Yeah. I mean, I would say there there have been a couple of people who call themselves social democrats, like if like a handful that are unironically like pro-capitalist, which mm -hmm. obviously is within the definition. It just says that you're working within capitalism. It doesn't say whether you're pro or anti. Um, so I understand that there there are those people. Um, but I think as like a term, it's just it's just rhetorically really it's such a good term. Um, because like the the problem, the primary problem with socialism is pointing out to people that like socialism has invariably changed and advanced for over the past what 100 years or whatever mm -hmm. um that the socialism quote unquote that occurred in the ussr is not what we're discussing or we're talking about that's not even close to it yeah that's why um, bernie then, says democratic socialism as well it doesn't actually mean anything it's just a yeah way of optically distancing yourself from you know totalitarian governments yeah okay cool um there was a another side question that I want to ask about, um, well, I'm going to go in the other order. Uh, I wanted to say that you, <laughs> you made some like anti sock dem claims. I'm assuming it's about right. your, the, the points that you just made earlier, which is the inevitable, um, discourse that occurs, hopefully, um, assuming that, you know, the fucking world doesn't light on fire and we all die that sock dems, there will be a fraction of sock dems that want to uphold the status quo and they will become the conservatives of the modern day um and that those people suck that is close to what your stance is yeah well even if you if you are committed to social democracy it remains the case that you have to placate existing business interests social democracy is capitalism after all and in a capitalist system the capitalists will always be 
if not the most powerful force, at least a very powerful force. So if social democrats operate in such a way as to make it harder for socialists to get their work done down the line, then yeah, I definitely take issue with that. There are people who yeah. think social democracy is enough. I mean, even a lot of liberals in the United States, they idolize countries like Finland and Sweden and Norway. Yeah. And those countries are definitely better than the United States in a great many ways. But I don't I want people to look past these intra-capitalist, you know, solutions. I want them to consider something else. I want them to abandon capitalist realism. Yeah, sure. I, I think it's a, a point that is so ingrained in people's heads that like capitalism is the only way. So it's and plus red scare bullshit and whatever. The, just these words alone are like, oh, oh no, socialism. So mm -hmm. like I, I'm aware of these things. Um, you, I guess I wanted to make a specific critique I, or something that, from my understanding, you had said but it was like incorrect about uh -oh. like social democracy like hinges on imperialism mm -hmm. when there are like obvious examples of like Bolivia and Venezuela, right? That aren't based on imperialism. Of course. But are reaching... It's a statement that requires qualification, but I stand by it with those qualifications, if I may. I don't know if that sounds weaselly, but we were well, talking... Well, I would just need to hear what the qualifications are. Yeah, so we were talking in the context of like the European first world imperial core um, social democracies, which are obviously in a very different place materially than say Bolivia. I think Bolivia is moving towards social democracy, but Bolivia as it stands is a capitalist country. It does have a you know, a robust, as robust as is possible, I guess, private sector. Um, the, the, the ultimate issue is that capitalism as it exists right now in the first world, in the global north, does rely on imperialism insofar as we have organizations like the World Bank and IMF, which dictate the terms of economic engagement between us and the global south usually to our benefit and usually to their detriment. This is neo-imperialism. It's not necessary for us to go over to India with trading ships anymore and hold their ports captive with cannons trained on, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> but, but instead, you know, we, we essentially get them into a system of debt slavery where the only way out is for them to hold very poor yeah. working conditions and they pay their people very, very little. And that's what I mean by that. When you take a look at countries like Norway and Sweden, what have you, these countries aren't like that participatory in what we would consider classical imperialism, at least not today. But when it comes mm -hmm. to their participation in neo-imperialism, yeah, their corporations engage in the same basic behavior. It's necessary to sustain the quality of life they have there while preserving the upper crust. You need to take that wealth from somewhere else. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm versed on this. I, I mean, like, if it's not obvious, I'm, or I guess I haven't stated it, so it's probably not obvious, but I'm pretty anti-imperialism. Um, I've done like a pretty decent amount of research onto like the imperialism, I guess if you, we can use these words in like a lot of Asian countries um, that I'm talking about South Asian countries from like the fact that we get like, what, like a fuck ton of cloth materials from like Bangladeshi kids um, and like all the China right, fucking... Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of yeah. people, they heard imperialism and they imagine like, like the way the the CIA overturns, you know, democratically elected leaders. And that's not what I mean at no, all. I just mean no. capitalism needs an underclass. It always, always, always has. We had slavery in the United States for a very long time. And after we got rid of that, we had sharecropping and we had very poor working conditions in our factories. But things have moved up a little bit. And since then, we, because economically it's beneficial for this to continue to be the case, we've relied on an underclass in other parts of the world. The nice thing about using kids in Indonesia is that since they're not present and visible and citizens, it's very easy to abuse and exploit them without getting a lot of bad PR to your government or to whatever corporations are profiting yep. from their suffering. Especially considering the fact that like, if the majority of your people, aka like Americans, you are an American, um, cannot afford even the basic necessities, there is no way that they can support American labor. It's just not possible. Like, I think people made like a big joke about AOC's shirts being like $40, $60 mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck. And she's like, yeah, it's because it's made with American labor. You guys keep talking about how you want to bring jobs back to America, but your clothes are all still mm -hmm. from, That was funny as China, fuck. Dude. When they <laughs> constantly talk about made in America labor and then she uses made in America labor and they can't handle the fact that that ups the price massively. It ups the price so significantly because American workers are paid way the fuck more than 14 year old mm -hmm. girls in Thailand are like that's the consequence you know yep 100 percent um and it's really and and the I guess the most fucked part is that like we can't just like stop making stuff there overnight um the quality of living for people who live in these uh countries that are being sort of well they're being taken advantage of right mm -hmm. um their quality of life 
actually has improved, not by a, by a crazy amount and not by an ethical way. Um, but like, if you ask these people who live there, they're like, I wasn't making money before. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I, I actually am making money and I can feed my family. Yeah, I have to work in like a literal sweatshop for 12 hours a day, but at least like before I couldn't feed my family and now I can't. Yeah, this is a lot of, this is something that many socialists have difficulty acknowledging. And it's that subsistence farming was a lot worse than uh, sweatshops, like massively yep. so. Um, so it, it is true that the global South has improved. It's difficult to say how much they could have improved if they had all been given the opportunity to engage in like um, economic protectionism, the way some of the um, East Asian tigers did, like a la South Korea and Singapore. Uh, it's possible that these countries could be in a much better place. It's possible that they could be in a worse place, but whether or not they're in a better or worse place specifically because of our economic engagement, the fact remains that that's not the standard by which we judge actions, you know? If you take a homeless kid in off the street and you feed them and you clothe them, but you also beat them, you can't make the argument that they're technically better off than no. they were before as a justification for the beating. Even if the net benefit remains, you're still doing something wrong. Just the 100%. argument that I make here. I would, I would completely agree. Yeah. Um, I, I just get very frustrated when I talk to people who are like anti-imperialist and then they say shit like, okay, well, let's just stop making labor in those countries. And it's like, Okay, I don't think that that's the correct solution. I think the correct solution is um, either removing some of our labor from there or or adjusting the way that we have like international powers on economic policy. Mm -hmm. Th that would be the closest thing. Um, but yeah, yeah if, we, so if we just withdraw our labor, we would cause an unbelievable economic crisis in these countries. Like countries like Bangladesh. Country. Yeah, Bangladesh and Th like even if you ignore the harm here, there would be significant harm here. Bangladesh and Thailand and all these other countries, they could not like they need our they need our business. They they yes. can't not have it. Their people would starve. That's the way the system is set up right now. So the goal, I think, would be to either an empowered UN or multilateral um, trade agreements being used to sort of force better labor terms on these countries. Um, and then we sort of, we maybe we like, um, we tax corporations more heavily if they use sweatshop labor. And slowly but surely, we use policy to kind of try to bring the global south in line. That's the best we can do under capitalism, I think. But it's a worthwhile goal. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's very similar to like removing manufacturing jobs in America or like coal jobs or whatever. Yes. The coal workers, it really sucks for them. People who grew up doing coal work, their parents did it, their grandparents did it. And now we're just like, yeah, sorry that you're doing that. But like, we can't have this anymore because it's not good for the environment. And we're all going to die if we don't stop doing this. Yeah. I mean, um, shit happens. It like, it really does suck. But like, if, you know, if we, if we, put our minds to it. I'm sure we could find a way to redistribute the wealth necessary to give these people dignified lives and give them the money they need to buy food and rent and stuff. We just don't yeah, care 100%. about that. We'll virtue signal over their suffering, but we won't actually do anything about it. 100%. Okay. We're, yeah, we're in agreement on this. Um, okay. The last thing I think I was going to say was um, sort of back earlier in some earlier topics, but do you think that it's possible to like fully remove capitalism? This is sort of like a just for fun question. Mm -hmm. So by remove capitalism, do you mean remove private ownership of the means of production? Or do you mean fully decommodify society so that nothing is being produced with the intention of being sold? Or both? Sorry, can you say the former? Sure. The former, like um, m make it so there is no private ownership of capital, that all industry is collectively or democratically owned. Oh, both. Um, I think that a global democratic uh, e economy is absolutely 100% possible. I do think there are some necessary uh, market systems which must be preserved. There has never been a country in the history of the world that has not had some kind of market system. The um, the supply demand curve is like a law. It, it It's not a theory, it's just how people act. Even in like the Soviet Union, you had black market trading. I think it's much smarter uh, rather than ignoring this, uh, I think it's much smarter to acknowledge its existence and try to find ways in which a market economy can be selectively applied in the least unethical way possible to make it as productive and efficient and healthy as possible. I don't know how effective getting rid of it entirely is, but considering the fact that socialism, I don't think 100% requires absolutely no commodification, at least depending on which definition you're using, I think that would be global socialism. And I think that's something sustainable. I do. Okay, cool. I mean, again, this should be pretty obvious that obviously I'm not talking about like tomorrow or within our lifetime. This we is... might be a while down the road. Yeah. Um, especially the market <laughs> element. A lot of people don't realize this, but the decommodification part of socialism is like 10 times harder than the democratic workplace thing. Every workplace oh, yeah. could be made democratic to some extent, given a little bit of time and a little bit of policy. 
they're and relatively they, soon. Yeah, like that. You could, uh, you could, if we, if there was a political will for it, that could be rolled out in America and completely employed within five years easily. But decommodification, 100%. that's like. <laughs> That's a fundamental restructuring of the way the global economy works. That would mean every country on earth would have to be on board. Like that would be very difficult. I mean, we still have like kings and queens and countries. Like yeah. we're <laughs> we're a ways away from removing capital. We haven't even removed monarchs yet. So let's fix that first and then maybe we can look at uh <laughs> capitalism. Yeah, well, we can, I mean, we can make pushes in both directions. I think, for example, one of the best things that Western leftists can do is they can make this country less intolerant of socialism, such that if there are successes in the global south, we don't stop them. So the next time there's some big elected socialist leader, uh, you know, in Latin America or Southeast Asia or Africa, um, we have a government which is not so intolerant of those ideas that we participate in the ousting of, of that leader. And that way, socialism can spread in a protectionist global south sense, while we kind of sort ourselves out here in the West. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would, I would, there's nothing to disagree with in that statement. I'm glad. Do you, um, you know, I was, uh, I was in DGG earlier, and uh, uh, someone mentioned, they said you were a socialist. Is there, is, was was I oh baited the God. whole time? Or oh are my, they just- You were baited the whole time. Is this oh my God. Okay, one of those like, everyone to the wanna, left of me is a communist kind of things? Well, yeah, it's that one. But do you want to hear a story time? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay, this, oh my God. I have like, I am I feel really bad because this person has ruined the ability for me to talk to any chatter in private anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry if you guys send me messages. I don't trust you motherfuckers. Um, I try and message people who message me. I try and message them back whenever I can. Um, and one person was like, hey, I actually really like your stuff. I'm a lib, um, but you know what? I actually enjoy your platform and I like the things that you talk about. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, great. So I'd like, I was talking to this person. If they send me a message, I'll reply, you know, whatever. Um, and then I brought Hakeem on my stream, okay? I had a conversation with Hakeem. I told him, hey, we're two brown people. You wanna talk about Aladdin together? How recently was this? The, uh, this was, well, talking to Hakeem? Yeah. I think I spoke to him like a week before you had spoken with him. Oh, an interesting coincidence. I didn't know he frequented streams. Um, He didn't. He actually like, he like, he was like, hey, I'm like working for the next month, but I think I have the 14th free. And I'm like, oh, wow. Thank you so much for like making the time. Um, I think I, ha I have the video on my YouTube somewhere, mm -hmm. but yeah, he came on, super cool, super fun. This dude freaked the fuck out. He was like, you're platforming a literal genocide denier and it's not okay for you to do this shit to him or to do, to do this to me. And he was like coming on and telling me like, so when are you gonna talk to Richard Spencer, huh? When are you gonna bring on Nazis, huh? And I was like, I, I was like, okay, out of the courtesy, out of like nice, the goodness in my heart, I was like, I'm gonna send this person a message and be like, hey, you have not been, you've been like literally acting up in my chat for the past week and it's been really cringe and it's been very Pepe mods. I'm banning you, okay? I wish you the best of luck. Um, and then he freaked out and then he posted DMs between me and him. I didn't say anything crazy. I didn't send my fucking boobies, but he posted these DMs online. Thank God I didn't, but then again, I don't send them to chatters. I only send them to streamers, Pepe La. Anyways, he posted this online and he was like- That's the supply you know, demand curve right there. You gotta keep supply low yep. so the demand's high. And he was, he was like, you know, out of like the integrity that I have, I didn't know if it was okay to publicize logs, but I thought this would be the best thing to do because I have so much integrity. I must, I must upload these logs for the people to see. And the logs are like lukewarm. It's like, Hey, stop being a dickhead. I have to ban you. Wow. You're really going to ban me. And then I block him on, on discord. Those were the logs that he publicized. It was literally just a self own. Was this, this uh, dude, DGG or? Yes, it was a okay, fucking yeah. DGD. -er. This dude goes on, I think Destiny had like a stream. He goes on Destiny's stream and he like, he was like, he invokes my name. <laughs> and he's like, did you know, did you know Denims talks to <clears throat> genocide deniers? Did you know she's a literal genocide denier? And, and I don't know, I, I don't know what's up. True. No, not true. true. Not true. Oh, this true. isn't Twitch. I can well, say. I, I, I have matter. talked to genocide. I'm usually on the other side of the table for them, but I have talked. 
Um, yeah, I don't know in what universe you have to be in that you can't talk to like a I can't I sorry I can't talk to anyone anymore unless they're perfectly morally pure in every way and the genocide denier takes one of them was really shit and the other one was non-existent there wasn't even anything I could find well, I, well, I, was... I will clarify I I do think that he came super irresponsible he came took the side of China over the Hong Kong protesters I'm pretty oh, 100%. sure he has like yikes takes and the Haldemar and a bunch of other shit like that but so we, from my understanding, we can only talk Haldemar... about so much and so much time yeah yeah, of course. From my understanding, the Haldemar thing, he had deleted the video, I think. Um, and the Tiananmen Square thing, I completely disagree with it. I completely disagree with his take. I, like, heard him out on it, and I was like, okay, I don't have the energy to, like, debate you on this, but I disagree with you on I this I think take. he said the Chinese students ran face first into bullets that had just been hanging casually in, in the air. Yeah, it's... Or something like that. They just walked into the knives, dude. Yeah, it was... <laughs> I don't agree with the take. Super cool dude. Super educated. Super cool. Still on the same side. Cool. We can fight the good fight. I don't agree. Um, but to like make this claim that like, okay, well, you talk to this person. Now you're literally a genocide denier. And he, this dumb fuck, this fucking ooh dumb fuck goes on his stream and he, he talks about me, he evokes my name and he's like, she's literally a genocide denier. So now everyone in, I guess every DG -er that has no brain cells, because there's a couple that have brain cells. Some of them are really cool. Um, they, they think that, like, I'm, like, a communist, Marxist, Leninist. They, they call uh, me a communist, if you can believe it. Oh, I can believe it. I can believe it, all right. Um, yeah, and I, the, so the issue... I Okay, I'm pretty... I'm very against any kind of genocide denial for fairly obvious reasons. Yeah. I, and I have many times in the past equated tankies and Nazis and the rhetorical strategies they use and their seeming priorities. That being said... I think that it's incredibly dumb to kind of use that as a, like a, a soapbox to imply that there's any kind of equivocacy, like literally any kind, between left authoritarianism and right authoritarianism, which is something that I notice a lot in Destiny's community, where there's like a direct equivocacy between like misbehavior on the left and misbehavior on the right. I saw it like, for example, I recently saw Destiny, it was somebody clipped this and sent, where, where Destiny said that like he thought the level of disinformation being pushed by the right and the left were somewhat comparable because he had seen a big tweet which claimed that Brianna Taylor had died in her sleep, which is not the case. She got up out of bed she and then died in the hallway. <laughs> um, now, it is technically true that that is misinformation, but that seems like very oh benign God. misinformation compared to what the right does so it's that it's that effort equi of equivocacy that bothers me sometimes yeah I think. But, you, but you don't understand she wasn't sleeping in her own home she was walking in her own home yeah. very different right right into the bullets it seems just like right. the tiananmen she square students <laughs> all right oh, no. Stop. um oh no i appreciate Stop, you coming on you're the one who brought it up okay <laughs> all right that's how most okay. of these streams go i appreciate you coming on by the way to talk about um, yeah no, no no i i appreciate you making time i know that you're very busy i also know that you i miss i think i assume you got like a crown a crown or, or not a crown uh, sorry uh i know you had like a tooth thing dentist oh stuff. yes I, I had a i had a root canal recently and did you get a what what is it called again an implant yeah well it was it was just a crown but i didn't realize the crown they put on is like the entire tooth like yeah it was so weird so, so this okay wait i'm sorry i have i have seven minutes till the next person i have to get at um the um it was really weird because I spent two hours doing the root canal where they like laboriously drilled down and obliterated yes. the nerve ending in my tooth. I've gotten and, one. Right. And they, yeah, and they took the x-ray and they showed it to me and they have like this very precise, very minute holes that have been drilled in to obliterate the nerve endings. And it's like, wow, what a precise and surgical technique. What comes next? And then the next guy comes in and he just cuts my tooth in half. He just takes a fucking <laughs> rotary saw and he cuts the tooth in uh -huh. half until the only thing that's left is like the little pointy bits that are sticking into my gum and then he just they fucking cement glue a, a crown on top of it and i was like well yep. i didn't realize it was they just did the whole tooth um, dude i don't trust fucking dentists dude those people are sociopaths okay oh well i mean i don't complain my procedure was excellent and the funny thing is of course i wasn't even under anesthesia when they cut my tooth in half it was just a dead tooth there was no nerve in it so it just yeah yeah, they just they just cut it in half, and now my my new crown it feels amazing. Um, it's so, it just feels like all my other teeth. I can't even, I don't even notice like what I'm in my day to day. You know, 
yeah, I I got like um a tooth a, a, I got a tooth no I got a uh, a root canal but I got like a tempo crown and I have to like I have all this shit to deal with with my fucking healthcare because you know United States healthcare mm -hmm. um and I have to get yeah, like a, an actual right yeah I imagine what, what I think like the procedures are like two three k something like that if you don't want to share finances you don't have to obviously but yeah I have to get like an actual crown crown and I'm looking forward to the day where I can like chew on this side of my mouth comfortably again and not have to like worry about like fucking with like the tempo crown anymore yeah i hope you're able to get that done soon you don't have insurance that covers that i guess most dental plans wouldn't um yeah it, the problem is they cover like half of it oh. so i still okay. have to pay a fuck ton out of pocket yeah um and then the, the other problem is like um i just moved so i have to get off the old health care or go back to new york and get it done there so yeah, I don't, I have, I'm, I'm still deciding whether I'm just going to switch my healthcare here to California or just go back for like a week when I still have insurance there. Cause I, I still have some. Godspeed and congrats on the move, by the way, California's, um, I think one of the better States in my humble opinion. I'm biased though. You are probably very biased. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, which, wait, which, which city, if you can say. Yeah. I'm in LA. Okay. Wow. Oh, uh, that could mean a lot of different things. Do, can you say can, what part of LA or I can DM you just like, don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, me okay. yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Cause for obvious reasons, yeah. like, dude, I was talking with Jade, Jade, the drag born. She's like talking about how all she's shared is the fact that she's in California and she has like a stalker. So yeah. Oh, well, okay. That's, that's not as fun. There are parts of LA <laughs> that are wonderful and beautiful. And there are parts of LA that are actual trash heaps. So I hope. That, yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope it works out. Wait, but, what, really quick, because I have four minutes, I think. Can I share how I ended up needing to get this fucking crown? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. It's the yikesest shit I've ever felt in my life, okay? Because mouth pain is the worst type of pain. It's like, the it's yep. the horror, you know? Um, I was eating. I, I've never taken care of my teeth at all, um, unfortunately. And I was eating those fucking Snyder's hard pretzels, the ones that are Oh, like, no! Yeah, yeah, the really hard ones. Those things are really, really, really tough. And mm, hard. Uh, oh yeah, they're fucking fat and meaty. They um, I bit down on one, and it just took a chunk out of one of my teeth, like a big chunk that almost went uh -oh. down to the root, uh -oh. and it was black on the inside. And I thought, okay, we'll we'll get this looked at. So I go over <laughs> to the dentist, and they this dentist he keeps telling me over and over how lucky I am, and you know why? Because the black that I was seeing was the quarter of a millimeter of infected tooth between the surface and my nerve ending that if it had taken any longer for me to notice this the infection would have gotten to the nerve ending and that would have been that um and the only reason i noticed is because i ate hard pretzels with that tooth that day damn bro yeah. you need to send snyder's a message and be like thank you so much yeah fucking yes yeah, seriously <laughs> Oh God! I've heard how painful that shit's get uh, shit gets. I'm, yeah, uh, very I, thankful. I I know you're like limited on the time. I was not so lucky. I didn't find out that my shit was fucked until it just literally started hurting to the point where like I couldn't I couldn't even drink on that side of my mouth, and I like dealt with that for like six months, just out of like sheer like anxiety about dentists. I just I just couldn't go. Under a, under a socialist government, Snyder's would be nationalized and every American would be given one hard tooth to bite on every month to know mm -hmm. if there's any underlying issues. Uh, I've got a sec. Uh, shout out. Wait, shout yourself out. Final memes. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm not actually a MAGA supporter chat. Please don't don't compare me with those sociopaths. Um, I am Denims. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Denims. I have a YouTube channel, twitch. Or sorry, youtube.com slash Denims TV. And I stream every single day at 6 a.m. PST, bright and early. Jesus. Yeah. Why? Uh, because Wait, I you get said to, 6 like, p.m. or 6 a.m.? Wait. 6, 6 a.m. I stream for like six hours every day from 6 a.m. to like 12. Jeez, okay, all right. I mean, I guess... Well, you, I have like the whole day ahead of me. So when I end my stream at like noon, I can do anything I want. I'm sorry, my schedule is completely fucked. I'm like, I wake up, I do my stream from 11, end at 3, I'm like, yeah, now I've got the whole day in front of me. And three is like when <laughs> Kanye wakes up. So our whole yeah. house is. I was talking fucked. to Kanye and and they were like, "My shit is fucked, bro. My shit is just. I wish I could wake up, really, dude." Yeah. Well, it's uh, uh it's a, a classic dorm room problem. So we're all young at heart, right? Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on. And yeah, uh, thank we'll, you for having me. Yeah, we'll we'll take more bread pills in the future. Okay. Pog. All right. Have a good one. Be well.